Let's just talk, Susan, before we get going. Everybody will, of course, know okay. you, but let's just give them an abbreviated version of who you are and what you're known for, and then we'll get into this soft launching. I'm Nika's mother. <laughs> And she's over so you have in the to corner. Know Nika. She's lying on the bed. Let me see. Hang on. Okay. Aww. There's Nika. How beautiful. And she fully believes that the serving tray that I bought is her home. So that's where she stays. Oh, and yes. that is great. And, and besides that, I'm a best selling author and. Um, on-camera moderator and speaker and uh, relationship expert, helping people to make sense out of the insanity that's out there. And jo just because other people don't have manners, don't have protocol, don't have communication skills, don't know what they want, uh, doesn't mean you have to end up holding the short end of the stick. So I that's what I do. I love that. And you, have, you are out there in your writing stuff and you wrote a book about older women, younger men which is very popular. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, that was some um, 23 years ago. I actually finished writing it in 1999 in a time period where it was a really, really big deal mm -hmm. to be a published author. We didn't have self-publishing. And if you did, you had to mail the books by yourself. <laughs> so this was um, kind of a big deal. And uh, I had a relationship with a significantly younger man and suffered unbelievable um uh, discrimination i mean hor horrible things that i can't even share people think i'm making up a story but my friends that witnessed it knew it was true and you know at some point when you have this incredible drama that you're dropped you're dropped into i think any of us who do our spiritual or psychological work kind of wake up to a moment where we say this is so big this is so crazy this is <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 it's not just people. The universe does not torture you for the fun of it. I promise everyone, if you're going through something negative, the universe doesn't go, oh, yeah, we're going to really get them now. We're going to slam them. The universe has better things to do. And I thought, why me? Why this topic? Why this love? And then I thought, oh, my goodness, what about all the other people that can't speak, that aren't comfortable mm -hmm. on camera, that can't write? That, and so when you start fighting for other people to correct an injustice or something else, you have unbelievable energy when they come at you. So that book became an international bestseller. Mm -hmm. It's now out of print. Do you think I had the forethought to buy a couple of copies? <laughs> now they're selling for like two, three, four hundred dollars. I'm like, I think I have one tattered copy at home. So, wow. um, but that was a big deal because the contributors to it wouldn't even tell us their names. They were so ashamed. There was such discrimination for being with somebody younger that they, I had to give false names. And then I had, if they were from New Jersey, they were from Iowa. And if they had four kids, they had two kids and I had to change everything. So wow. that, led, oh. that led me to relationship counseling. And I have no psychological degrees for it. So I'm always honored when doctors such as yourself, you know, and, and therapists come to ask me what I think. But I think I have a pretty good handle on human nature. Yes. Which is just a big part of this. Right. And you're, you're around people and you, you're a great listener, I see. And you're also very poignant with what you're going through. Like I, I think for so many people, and especially the bigger they become as far as notoriety, they start feeling a little shameful about things they went through, but you actually use those things to help to be vulnerable with others so that they'll open up and go, okay, thank God it's not just me that oh, had no. to go through this. Well, Mary Jo, you must know this with your practice mm -hmm. but uh, i mean honestly the worst thing anybody in my position can do is claim to be a guru and you've got it all together i've watched religious leaders do it i've watched politicians do it i've yeah. watched you know uh motivational speakers who tell you everything's great and have these messy affairs and all you were just human beings trying right. to make our way through this world trying to share 
maybe this worked for me, maybe it'll help you. And, and, and when we are in a relationship, we can become blind to the very <laughs> things we tell other people. Mary Jo, 30, <laughs> over 30% of my clients are doctors, <laughs> psych, psychologists. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. I, mean, I believe it. Because. And, you know, I think there's an attitude that when you're a psychologist or, you know, in my case, I actually do marriage therapy that you've got it together. Listen, oh, yeah. I'm learning from my clients every day or I'll get together with my husband. I'm like, what are you saying? I just heard this and I can't believe that you are feeling the same way. So nobody, we are all on a level playing field on I agree. In some area in our life and i think we're supposed to connect and lift each other up with what we learned about our own past or when we went through something so so actually susan i'm gonna just be once again so grateful that you're joining me because sundays are supposed to be the day off oh. and the fact that you will work on this day to give to other oh, people no, i work seven days a week yeah this is insane but i well, you might for your own practice, but when I think that you're willing to volunteer this for not oh, only your you, followers, uh, but mine and other people, I mean, that's what really, some people go to church, others serve oh, in other ways. And I, so I just love this thought of serving by doing this. And, and in a very real way, it's our truth, it's our work, and we're giving it back. So Thank you, Mary yeah. Jo. That's very you're sweet. You're welcome. I well, thank you. You're, so thank you. I kind of want to talk about soft launching. And if it goes into other crazy modern dating things, you know, I, I just remember like during the millennial time, because I have two daughters and they're millennials. Right. Mm -hmm. And they used to, this is a time of MySpace and Facebook. If you were having a relationship it was a social status, oh. Susan. Like they would put it on their signature. Oh, yeah. like, I, you know, so and so is dating so and so. And so this intrigues me now with the soft launch. It's almost like there's a bunch of wounded people out there trying not to get further wounded. And oh, Susan, before I give that to you, if any of you people watching have questions oh, or good. comments, Please leave them because Susan and I are going to take them. We're going to answer them for you and hopefully give you some insights that you didn't have when you first started. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, so MySpace and Facebook, all that was, which are early 2000s? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was even in the 90s. 90s. I think it was the 90s because I the had rest my of us. baby. Yep, yeah. In, in so, the 80s. We lived in a much more civil time period. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had left the 20th century yes. when people had relationships. When people mm -hmm. such as myself were constantly, like you barely get out of a relationship and somebody would be on you to get you into the next right. one. And it, we all had occasionally, you know, we had a, uh, occasionally we'd be fooled, but it was more the exception than the rule. And I think the reason for the shift now is that <laughs> I kind of thought this was funny. I, given my mm -hmm. time period, Mary Jo, you're hardly a contemporary, but you're in I, the, one of the younger I'm in, No, I am for sure in your, in your well, whole genre. I got a kick out of COVID in Europe where they were starting to allow people to cross the border to visit who were in long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the time frame? Oh, yeah. Six oh, yeah. months. Yeah. Six <sighs> months was considered a long-term relationship. I'm like, oh, my God, I did decades. I mean, <laughs> you can't do that many partners. I mean, you got a decade, then you got five years, then you got seven years, you take a time off, then you got, I mean, your life's three quarters over, right? right? So we're spinning much faster now and because yeah. of uh, the technology we're just going through people left right and center and people's attention span is less their need for a quick fix has been altered mm -hmm. by all mm -hmm. of these converging components and m m very few people nowadays have the skill set or the mentality to want to invest in a human being 
-hmm. They like the ride up. Yeah. But, you know, listen, don't tell me what, like, what you want, you need, you want to hear from me. Like, I don't feel like doing it. So they evacuate. So, of course, the reason, I think, for a soft launch nowadays, as opposed to 15, 20, 30 years ago, is that nobody wants to look like a fool on social media and say, oh, here's my boyfriend, Chuck. Yeah. And then they're like, where's Chuck? Yeah. Well, you know, it was good till it wasn't, and mm -hmm. uh, he's moving mm -hmm. to Seattle, whatever. So you don't want to backtrack. So this soft launch is a way to preserve your already fragile ego because you don't know if the person dating you today in your bed today is going to be there tomorrow morning. So you're kind of inching them out to extend the time period of the dating and the romance to see if they actually last. Right, right. So it's more you're doing it as a way of per, like perseverance. Like, is this person going to follow through or is this person going to ghost me tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of making it a soft intro. Yes, because the minute you claim it's real, mm -hmm. And then it has to look like something real and it has to follow the rules of consistency. Right. right? And these relationships right. don't follow the rules of consistency. They're here today, they're gone tomorrow, then they come back two months from now, then they start up, then they leave, then you got somebody else, and it just like that, right? Right. Susan, when you are you noticing any age difference? One of the comments we had is what is your take on younger men and, and older women? Well, yeah. I think it's wonderful, but um, we have a question here yeah. too, just so you know. Okay. Um, I, I think there are often, there's oftentimes a gap mm -hmm. where mature women uh -huh. have oh. had their kids and there's any place between 45, 42 and 55 and above. Men their age want 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. younger. Mm -hmm. And they look at the dating pool staying with appropriate aged men. So they think, okay, um, there are no men that want me. Uh -huh. And this is a very common response. And yet, thanks to this unknown person that we will just not even mention, the world is now open to the fact that a young guy can look at a woman and go, yeah, she's hot. I like her. And I love the fact that she knows what she wants. She's clear. She can communicate. Mm -hmm. She's making my job so easy. So we have extended, for mature women, we have extended the pool of options, which is amazing because same age men tend to, with the exception of an ABC TV show, tend to, I'm talking about the Golden Bachelor, mm -hmm. want younger. Mm -hmm. They just do yeah. as a status symbol. Why, you know, so... Um, they can and do work. And way back in 1999, when I mm -hmm. did the research of the 200 couples, the average age of people together then, when there was tremendous discrimination and censure, not like now, out of all the couples, the average time these couples had been together at the time that I interviewed them was 12 years. Wow. Either living together or married. But the average age difference was 16 years. Wow. Now, that is... imagine if I could have followed up another 20 years later, how big and how enormous the span would be of the people participating in that love model. So it, just for your listeners, it's not for everybody. But ladies, right. if you've been looking at the guys out there your age and going, ugh, do you ever mm. go to a gym? You know, do you have any interest? Can you even talk to me? You know? Right. Then, like, can you even say more than, hey, what's up? I mean, then maybe a younger guy is going to be the thing. Not all younger men are evolved and not all older women are evolved. Just because we're older doesn't mean we're smarter or we have it together. <laughs> That's just because right. they're young doesn't mean that they're great. But the, the age difference for a woman who has worked on herself, fit, in shape, progressive, uh, future thinking, you know, really a smart gal, the connection is so easy mentally because you have a younger generation that is the byproduct of all this social and intellectual input, and they are more in alignment with somebody 10 to 16 years older because they're a new product of evolution. Yes. So the woman doesn't have to fight to just be a fashion accessory on her husband's arm. You know? I, and I 
love that because I think not only are women who are smart and take care of themselves an asset to themselves and other people that they come in contact with, but for their partner, they actually lift their partner up too because now your partner's with a woman who not only takes care of herself and looks good, but she's smart and she knows how to relate to other people. You know, I don't know what you're seeing, Susan, but in my practice, I give people extra points no matter how old they are if they can relate to other people. Like if they have the social skills to look at that person in the eyes and be comfortable in their own skin because now the people I'm talking to, especially in their 30s, 20s, they can't maintain eye contact. And no. eye contact is so important to sexuality and sexual chemistry and trust you know who's going to trust somebody that is so used to looking at their phone and their eyes are darting around they're anxious it's you know you had a question on there from lean fit and they were saying that they had a their partner what they were 60 their partner was 30 but this um this person that wrote the comment said his daughter was 28 and he was <laughs> concerned and he, he obviously, I would be concerned about that too. What do you think of that? Wait, she's 60, he was, the I think it was, make sense there. I think it was, he was 60, she was 30 He's and the an daughter, the, I think the guy is the one that, that okay. um, wrote under that tight under that comment title. Well, whatever whatever mm -hmm. we're talking about here, mm -hmm. you have a senior partner and a younger partner. Yes, and the younger partner is closer to one of the children's ages. That's that, for the child, mm -hmm. especially if it's a girl. It's an issue like, what do you want with daddy? You're my age. Come on, I know you're a gold digger. If you're uh, a guy, they assume you're there for opportunity or just to bang their mom, and so they're going to be upset. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. people will always have a reaction mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the larger the age gap, the more contentious it can be as far as, you know, outer judgment. So it, it comes with the turf. It's kind of like, you're not on an, you're not on a freeway. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're kind of hiking up a trail. And if it's a big age gap and you're in a narrow minded community, you're like with a Sherpa going up the Himalayas. It can be rough, but yeah. don't worry about it, you know. How, who is the discrimination worse for? An older woman with a younger man or an older man with a younger woman? Oh, you an think? older woman with a younger man. Oh, it because is? The older man with the, oh, the older man with a younger woman is called history. <laughs> that's just the way, that's called life. That's the way it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the discrimination is more for a woman oh, who has it. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Does it well, come from on... her friend, Susan, or oh, more it comes from, from everybody? Oh, oh okay. I, got, I was target practice for every single TV producer and journalist. I mean, it wasn't until Oprah was holding my hand saying, oh my God, I love what you do. You are so <laughs> wonderful. I'm like, oh, now I can relax because I was so tired of being attacked and pummeled and criticized. and. Do you have mommy issues? Um, are you just, uh, a, are you, uh, what was it called? What do, you, what do you call it like when you're sexual? I forgot the word. Like, like a cougar. Like a cougar. Like a cougar, but like, are you a sexual deviant? Oh, I mean, oh. do you, you oh. know, uh, are you, <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, do you like to control him? Mm -hmm. Are you a sadist? Are, you know, are you a dominant? I mean, everything, like what, are you insecure? Why can't you find some of your age? And then they also diminish the younger man and make him up uh, uh, like a toy boy. Mm -hmm. So one of the best examples why we can never, ever, 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 ever use the <laughs> word toy boy again is Emmanuel Macron. Oh. The, yes, uh, of France. Mm -hmm. Like when you are running the country of France yes. and your yes. wife Brigitte is some 16 to 20 years older than you, and I can't remember the exact maybe 25, 30, uh, like he's no toy boy, okay? Yes, yes, but I think they're gonna split. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, which, oh, well, which was very sad I to me, but it didn't it, hear about that, but okay. Yeah. That's what I heard. And I was very, but they've been together for a long time. Yes, they have. Got the sense it was more family issues. Somebody had asked what you think about pocketing. And oh, when you put I, somebody I talk in about a, that a little bit, but not as much as, as what you have out about. Well, why don't we start with your definition of it? Because you've already spoken about it. Okay, Just well, for the pocketing, it, what my clients tell me is that basically they feel like they're stuck in their partner's pocket. And he takes them out when he wants to. Many times these guys have other lives. And it can, I guess it could happen the reverse too. A woman could pocket a guy and she could take him out to show certain friends and they yeah. kind of tuck him away nicely when he didn't fit with her career plans or yeah. whatever. But I, that's kind of what I see it more in my office. It's very hurtful. It's a lot like being sidelined or- yeah, It's a know, side piece. Uh, we it's have just, a, you're, yeah. you're a side piece of whatever. We have a lot of different terms for the same things nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I always want to get the clarification yes. of where we're coming from. Um, so I call this compartmentalizing, mm -hmm. but it's where you're a place card, you're an option, mm -hmm. uh, you're a booty call. There is a hierarchy of the people that we bring into the public realm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is, according to our our need for social approval or our career, some discrimination about who we bring forward mm -hmm. and who we don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And we all know, if you're honest, everybody on here, there's that person you've been sleeping with, they're hot, they're fun, but, but you might not want to put them in a nice outfit and put them at the intimate table with your top colleagues and your boss and the people that mean the most to you you might say mm, great in the bedroom great in the weekends love to hang out but this is not the way i want to be representing myself so sometimes people do these things and they have to in, mm -hmm. in the, so we're talking about brigitte macron now yeah, yeah. i see that yeah. yeah and someone earlier said that they had been pocketed because and they knew it because on Friday night, they had a date at 2 a.m. And so basically, it was a booty date, just like what you said. It, I'm sure that this person was, you know, great during intimacy in the bedroom, but it's just during the other person's life, they were, they were not somebody they wanted to be seen with, which I think is more hurtful or as hurtful than ghosting to use somebody like that. So... Well, so let's ask now yeah. for our listeners, if somebody did that to you and they called you at two o'clock and you don't see them during the week and you don't hear from them, do you actually think that's somebody you should continue to give your time, your energy, your body, your heart and your soul to? Even yeah. if you want to say, hey, it's just fun, because many people try to gloss over the unbelievable trauma to their self-esteem that people like you and I have mm -hmm. to deal with later That's because right. this it's all good oh I was drunk I don't care I felt like it we always think mm -hmm. we, you, we have this uh, this fantasy that we can get in and get out and do the most intimate things with somebody and never catch feelings we live with this like oh I will be safe and I don't think we think it through and when we get in and we start to feel a connection which is healthy and normal and we should feel that mm -hmm. then we realize that we've chosen somebody that's not on par with us so the question is can we please discipline ourselves to see it for what it is look at it and say wow this is not cool yeah. but before i leave by the way i'm just going to let them know that this is what happened i came in for real I'm very disappointed in you because you were somebody I thought was a person of quality. Mm -hmm. I'm really sad. Right. You kind of blew my image of who you are because I wanted to admire you. And now I realize you just pocket people and you're looking for booty calls and you're not the man or you're not the woman or you're not the personality I thought you were. And I think that's an important bye-bye message. Boy, and Susan.
And I, very few people talk about that message you should give them when oh, you, when you make that decision. And, you know, and they are like, well, I don't want to make a big deal about it. Or I don't want to oh. confront them. I, and I will tell them, you are not confronting them. You are advocating for yourself. You, and not only that, you're giving them an idea of what will happen if they continue to act that way. Well, I think you need to take the reins. I'm, I have so many conversations. I, I think I spend most of my time waiting while people mm -hmm. write down what I've said so that they can repeat it because I have, I have pre-dating communication. I have during the dating communication. I have this broke up communication. I'm always looking for a way that we can, um, how do I say, neatly, yes. elegantly, package our messaging in a responsible diplomatic adult way but it has a point to the end of it mm -hmm. and it must mm -hmm. i don't think people know their human rights yeah i i i so I, I, i've done videos on this and i know you're never going to find it because the seo sucks and all that but honestly i'm I'm advocating for people to understand your inherent human right as a person, that mm -hmm. people do not get to pick you up, play with you and throw you down and that that's okay. And that is, oh my goodness, I don't want to make them uncomfortable. What? Right. You don't have to be a bitch. You don't have to be an a-hole, but you need to say, you need to find your messaging to give yourself the power to call it for what it is. You mm -hmm. don't have to be a horrible person, but you need to find a way that you feel resolved, done, and whatever was thrown at you, that you have done a really good turnaround and that you flip the script and let them know where the responsibility lies. I, I did a little merch line, more for me than anybody mm -hmm. else. And I, and I did, and it's not a completely Susan phrase, but I have these little t-shirts called, it's not me, it's you. Yeah. And it, because I did that for all, and a mug, and I tell everybody, get the mug, get the t-shirt, I don't care, get the sticker for $1.99, put it on your refrigerator. When they act crazy, you gotta remember, it's not me, it's you. Right. And, and don't take the responsibility for them and try and make it, oh, 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 all good, because I did that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm older, I know what to do. Yeah, well, still... and you know, Susan, I think people now sometimes feel really vulnerable. Like if they're honest, one person said, what are some situations that you don't suggest sending them a goodbye message to advocate for yourself? I honestly cannot think of one, but I think so many of my clients at least in the in the texas area have told me they're terrified of doing that and is that a, is that because of where we live is is that just because women have been so told that they can't do that or what is it none of us know our rights yeah none of us i mean if it feels off it's probably off Mm -hmm. If you were bamboozled and led down the line of it was together, it was together, they paid attention, now they're gone. That's not you. Right. I spend half the time telling people that, you know, okay, perfect example. I'm sorry for those of you that know me. <laughs> You've heard this story before, but it's a good one. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting a guy. So I dated bad boy players on purpose for six years straight. Oh, no. Not a non-hookup girl mm -hmm. never did a hookup in my life long-term decade-long relationships and i realized oh my god i can't help anybody nowadays i can't mm -hmm. they're in and out of bed then they're suffering I, I i i can't so i thought i i have to take their i have to go i know i'm gonna lose i will be just crucified but i gotta get the information i knew there was a way to turn it around and so i practiced how to be and what I found that was so interesting is that people don't know how to call it. They don't know how to see it for what it is and they don't know how to advocate for themselves. And when somebody is playing you and you need to get out, I think what's important is that you have to package it for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happened is this girl, um, I, st I went out with this guy who'd asked me a thousand times to go out. He was, I think 23 years younger. I mean, I picked 
horrible, you're going to fail. I had to, because I didn't want to do anything bad to the guys. Like I always have this ethical thing. Like if I'm doing research, I don't mind if I suffer emotionally, if I'm that invested, like I was so determined to get it, I would walk through fire. I had to know. (laughs) But I didn't want to activate a man that might or possibly could have feelings. So they had to be super young. They had to have no skill set for a relationship and just be a hardcore player that would try and dump me in a day. That was my set. And I remember he asked me out for um, Valentine's Day and he didn't call in the afternoon. And so I sent a text because I wasn't afraid. And I just sent a text, hey, are we still on? And I didn't hear from him that night. And a girl called me that I know. And I said, I didn't hear from him. I guess he stood me up and she said, oh, well, that's easy. Well, you slept with him. I said, I didn't sleep with him. She said, oh, it's because you didn't sleep with him. (laughs) We do this to women all the time. Mm -hmm. No matter what happened, if he dumped you, fall, he fell by the wayside, you did something wrong. Yeah. It's you lost him. It's never, hey, he never wanted to stay. Right. He just did what he was going to do anyway. So I really, really, really think people need to understand the difference and not take the responsibility for somebody else's bad behavior. Yeah. And have you noticed, Susan, that when women, when this happens to women, very rarely do we say the guy, like the guy the guy was social was socially immature the guy didn't know what he wanted he yeah. was, no we go to right to the woman they had sex too soon which oh, is true i mean i think them. i know but it's yep. always them it's, it's always, always the or ones. if they don't have sex at all oh you made it too serious oh, he right. couldn't so, so handle it because you made it too serious yeah. oh, and i'm like wait a minute this. yeah if it's somebody that cares basically the guy was going to play and you knew it. You called it right away. And had you not called him, then at le- then he wouldn't have even had that excuse that you even went the extra mile and called him. So, so. You, you have to realize either way, we're going to lose if you talk to your friends. So I have another rule. Be very careful who you tell it's going on in new relationships. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got an opinion from their own baggage and you know, you have to, you, we all have to learn the skill of mm-hmm. checking in with ourselves, what feels right. And then when you're in a jam and you're in a moment, think through and don't stop at either or answers. Because in most of life, I find that we're in this duality of it's this or it's this. Mm-hmm. Neither one are good or we would have chosen easily, right? right? <laughs> So it's normally something in the middle. And I I really try and teach people to think beyond the either Mm -hmm. or scenarios. Try something you've never tried before. Make a combination of your own. At this point, you've got nothing to lose. You've got nothing to lose. This is playtime. They did a bad thing. This is like, whoopee, now I'm going to try this. I thought I'd try humor this Mm -hmm. time. You know? I mean, you have nothing to lose. Yes. I love that. Susan, getting back to soft launch okay. just for a bit. Okay. okay. Who, the top of the show. Yeah. Yeah. We well, should. no, because right. I love this. You know, I told you before I could go on a trip with you. I could talk all day to you. So who should do this? And, and do you recommend they do it together as a, as a couple decide how they're going to tell people? Because yes, I, it that makes works. sense to me that, that if you're, if you have a relationship, you both are really trying to nurture, then you, it seems healthy that you would say, do we want to announce this yet? Do we want to keep it secret? How do you feel? I mean, that would be what a, what a healthy relationship would look like. I I think Mary Jo, by the time you're actually having that level of conversation, you are in a relationship. Oh, well, oh, so this is before, this is more like a situation. This this is when people are meeting somebody, hanging out with somebody. We, we're talking like we're in a relationship. How are we, the unified couple, going to present this to the world? You're already like oh, this, okay? okay? You're a team. So the, the people who are scared to soft, are, are soft launching are like, uh, can I, do you mind if I put you on this Instagram post? You know, you sometimes you have to check with that person because you are outing them by even being seen with you and you don't know who else they're dating. I mean, I'm not talking you and I, I'm talking right. about 
young people and people dating nowadays. This is what yeah. they're up against. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, they're like, do you have an, I, I'd like to post this picture. Are you okay with that? And the, the person might go, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. And then they don't qualify who this person is. Maybe right. they tag them, maybe they don't. And then as this seems to be more repetitive and people say, oh, you two make such a cute couple. You're like, and then, yeah. then what they will do is probably figure out between the two of them, where are we going? And, you know, is this, so it, it's, I think everybody now has a grand sense of intrepidation mm -hmm. about state, stating a firm fact that we are a couple until they are absolutely, absolutely sure that they are. Oh, okay. And this is no matter what age. No matter what age you are when you're dating, you're you're soft launching mostly first. I I I wouldn't, but then again, by the time I get there, you're already in my life. So I don't have mm -hmm. to worry about it. I mean, I, I don't know how I might do it today. I I hadn't even thought about it, but I I mean, if you were starting all over yeah. again. Like Would I'm you have thinking, a problem yeah. posting a, a picture of a person with you, and then ask. Well, them, would you have to ask them what are we doing here? Because well, I think we're of of a generation that the, these seem kind of ridiculous questions, but yeah, to others they're not. Right. Well, I I think I'm much more direct than the majority <laughs> of the people I help. I really do. Like I would go out, and if I liked someone. I would say, I really like talking with you. I, I really too. like you. I, I can't I imagine playing coy. I like, I don't know. It's so you know, much it's just work, so weird. isn't it? Yes, I, it's so much work. They're making it so much more difficult and complicated than it needs to be. But then again, if I was hurt and I have worked with people who have been ghosted, betrayed beyond yeah. anything imaginable, then I can see why I would be nervous about it. Well, all of dating for most people entering the field now is um, it's kind of like a first freeze in a Minnesota lake. You, <laughs> God, that a is a great analogy. We walk out. It looks like it's frozen, but it's a deep lake. And you go a little bit further. And then you hear the crack. And then you're like, oh, my God. So. You know, nowadays, it was in listen. In former times, people didn't get in and out at such a fast pace. Yeah. People didn't just test because remember, all of this went sideways the minute that we separated relationship from sex and just threw it out there. Yeah, the millennials just did the hookups and they separated the two. This is there's no. There's, there's no net, safety net for security. Mm -hmm. you, you and I, we, we went out into the world and created relationships, right. and that was the norm. Right. And then when it was kind of changing, we got very clear, and this is what I do, and this is what I don't do, and this is what I want, and this is what I don't want, and this isn't working for me. Right. We got very clear on that because we knew the difference. But there are people that I know that are 40 that have mm -hmm. never had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. A lot of sex, a lot of mm -hmm. hopeful people coming in and out of the revolving door, but there are people that meant to get married and have kids mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. aged out and couldn't find a partner and, and think the whole world is like this. So it doesn't have to be like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying do a kickback to a former time period that we've obviously grown past, but honest communication and being really clear about what you want. And by the way, your body, mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. to say what is okay to do with that. Exactly. Your heart. Your exactly. Heart, you get to say, I don't like this. This mm -hmm. doesn't work for me. That's right. You get right. to say these things. Yeah. And, and I don't care what sex you are, you get to say those things. Yes. Because I work a lot with men with sexual problems. And many of those men were harassed, many of those men were perpetrated, abused, and because they were men, there was a social stigma that you should like this. Oh, you you shouldn't God. be offended. Nobody likes to be taken advantage of before they're ready. Nobody likes to be touched in a way they're not ready for. So when somebody says, this is my body, 
this is how I feel or this is I you know I really I loved what you said I really wanted to like you I re, I wanted to respect you I don't and I wanted me. I mean that would be my new line if somebody did something that was I thought was offensive sexually yeah. or for a booty call if somebody asked me for a booty call, I would say, this is so sad to me yeah. because I really wanted yeah. to respect you. It's, I did respect you yeah, till then. I know. So, you know, what was novel that nobody had ever heard when I said it to a guy some 20 years ago mm -hmm. is now probably commonplace. Like, like, oh, is she giving you the respect conversation? Here's how you turn that one around. So they're probably a bunch I of have dating never coaches. Heard, that, I've never uh, heard it, Susan, and I think it's lovely, and I would use it. Well, I would use it as a woman. If I were a guy and a woman tried to make me feel uncomfortable or unmanly because I didn't want to have sex with her, yeah. I would use it as a, as a guy, and I know men feel that way sometimes. Oh, I've had men call me and say, this is weird. Please don't mm -hmm. tell anybody that I said this, but I took out this girl, I picked her up in my car, took her to a lovely dinner, I got back in the car, and she dove for my zipper to try and give me a blowjob. And yeah. they're like, and he's like, I felt disgusted. I wanted her to be the woman I could take out. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so what he, and I had to explain to him that unfortunately she hadn't dated many men like him. Mm -hmm. And I believe in her understanding, not to make him cheap, but in her mind, that was probably the price of a meal oh. in her world. Mm -hmm. There's a payment for being nice. Well, and that's a whole nother sad situation. But, you know, this is, this is the confusion that we get. And mm -hmm. that's why we need to be very clear on who we are, what we want, and try to try, try, try to get words, not Susan words, mm -hmm. not Mary Jo words, but a version that is truly you, that speaks from your truth, kind, mm -hmm. diplomatic, tactful, but clear. Yeah. Yes. Direct message. I think yes. if, that's really something for all of us to strive for. Well, whatever you're launching. Yeah. I just find this whole topic so complicating. It, it just seems like now with modern dating, there's all these different terms and all of them seem disrespectful. They seem like, like words describing a way to find the exit from a relationship and i'm wondering where are the entrances <laughs> like where are people talking about someone asked a question where would you draw the line as far as feeling um a victim of of ageism in a relationship oh that's interesting i i, I don't know who's doing certainly that better not be your partner mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the people around you judging it but if you feel that your partner is judging you for anything, that they're critical of your intelligence or lack thereof, or that they appreciate the college you went to, or they don't think it's, it was an Ivy, or they don't think you make enough money, or they're trying to diminish your social standing, none of that is okay. Mm -hmm. And neither is ageism. So we have to, I think in analyzing what we feel is a trigger or a wound, we first have to say to ourselves, do I have a predisposition to be a little touchy about this? What can I do on my end through therapy and through maybe cognitive behavioral therapy, whatever mm -hmm. self-talk, to clear up any issues I have around that might be magnetizing it to me and making me feel more uncomfortable? How can I rebalance myself? And secondarily, then how can I see what's happening as it's happening and state in a way that is comfortable to me but state and make sure that I can articulate that that kind of a comment is uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. I don't understand where it's coming from. What's the basis for this? Mm -hmm. It just feels very odd to me and it feels critical. And it hurts me that you'd say that. First of all, somebody has got a thing about ageism and they're with you. They shouldn't be with you. Exactly. Exactly. It, Unless, it's like that um, shaming, you know. Exactly. If they're with you and they're making derogatory comments or what you interpret as derogatory, 
I, I 100% agree with what you said, Susan, but I would check out with them as well. Yeah. I would say, I'm not clear about what you're saying right oh, now. Can you explain it deeper? Oh, because sometimes that. people say things just to get a rise. Oh. And if you don't react with your own stuff and you go, I'm curious why you would say something like that, then Here let go. them kind of you know, feel it out and see what's going on with them. But let's go Why back they did to that. this. Mm -hmm. What do you think about somebody who would bait you to get a ride? Yeah. Let's oh, go man. back. I, I, mean, I just think that's so abusive. And yet too. a lot of men will, uh, men in particular will bait you to get a rise. And I don't know, they'll say, well, I was just teasing. Or no, no, I no, was no, no. just trying to get at you. And in my world of therapy, that's abuse. That's emotional abuse. But yet a lot of a lot of people were raised in that, Susan. Oh, and they oh, don't, don't see it that way. I, I, I know. don't care if they were raised yep. in that. I don't care if they learned it from a pickup artist thing back in the 2000s. <laughs> I, I don't care if a red pill guy said this is the way to dismantle a woman and neg her. I think that's horrible. Yep. Um, I knew guys that used to, you know, got different languages for different parts of the world in, in uh, Australia that call it stirring you, you know, yep. to, stir, to get you to, because there was a kind of a dislike of the aristocracy and the British mm -hmm. aristocracy. So well, a beautiful woman will take you down a peg and ignore you and pretend we don't see you. Um, it's just like all these things. And you have to say to yourself, I mean, I, I used to, I, okay, grew up in Minnesota. That's the disclaimer. Okay, so here you can understand. I believed whatever people said because <laughs> we told the truth. We, I, we, I mean, I wouldn't tell you I did something if I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, and I wouldn't understand somebody that wanted to play a game with mm -hmm. me because I knew I wasn't raised that way. So I had to learn what that was. Exactly. So, so I thought confident was the person with a lot of, you know, uh, charisma and joie de vivre and they're always on top and they're kind of maybe even putting people down, maybe even a little bullying, always confident and that air of supremacy until I realized very late in life, like I think I was already 50 at the point that I went, oh my God, that's actually insecurity. But yes. it took me a long time to read through that. So if somebody is trying to um, spin you or stir you or bait you or trigger you or test you, oh, forget it. Mm -hmm. If somebody has to test you, run, run, run. Don't have to overthink it. You run, run, run. Because that kind of a person, that's indicative of a deeper issue. I think that's a dispositional trait that you got to run from because I think a lot of it has to do with the inherent disposition of the human being. Yes. And I think also anybody that would do that has their own wounds oh. that oh, they yeah. have not dealt with. And they're the most toxic person you'll ever run into is someone Agreed. who was, has been abused or come from a toxic home and decided to push it all under the rug. I just agree. let's not pay attention to it. Then it's popping up all over in your relationship. And when you say, I think this is coming from your family, they're like, you don't like my family. And oh my God, most the of the time it's, it's true. You don't like what they did to your partner or whoever yeah. you're with. So Susan, we are out of time. I and know. I I've feel got so client. sad, okay, but I wanted to there. tell you thank you. <laughs> I know. Oh, you, you're all wonderful. I have to shout out to a couple of people here. Yes. I saw Lana come by. I saw somebody from Clarity come by. I know there are other people here, but whoever joined us, I thank you for that. And um, Mary Jo, thank you uh, for you. Oh, I go through well, the difficulty of trying to figure out how to get on this thing because I don't do these very often, if ever. But you're such a delightful and warm and encouraging and um, truly a lovely hostess. Well, and I thank really... you. I, I just love doing stuff with you. And I, I knew we would make it work easier today. And it is, Susan. Like, it, the more we do, them, the soon well, we'll just be popping on. They have to screenshot for me. Push the plus sign. Then push the... Okay. That was never given in the instructions. I don't know where they think you're coming from. You can't leave that stuff yeah. out for people like me. So. Well, I'll have to put that on the instructions, too, because an intern of mine actually made the instructions. So now I'll know. Oh, I'll go back. See, they're and... so intuitive. Yes. I was working with a tech guy today, 
And he said, you don't have to do it like that. I said, stop. This is the way I do it. And he watched me go through about 12 steps that he wouldn't do because he would have done like this. I said, this is my system. <laughs> that whatever <laughs> works. We do what works. But for all you lovely followers, thank you for thanking us. This means a lot to Susan and I to be able to serve you and to help you with your relationship. Somebody asked if we'll be answering the comments. Um, I, I'll let Susan. I, I have another, I have to get off at five, but I have some more time if you have more time. Yeah, I'll have to get off now. Okay, okay. But I, what I want to say is if you leave a comment that is specifically for counseling, I can't legally answer you if it's just for you because I'm only licensed in Texas, but you can email me. And if it's due to a video on my YouTube, or if you even use this as a video, like if you say on the video, I can answer specifically for that video, but I can't do it on the comment section. And it's just and the rules. Okay, uh, and so Mary Jo, you are going to then put this on your feed so people can see yes. it at a later time if they joined later, correct? Yes. It will be on the feed so everybody can watch it. Someone said this needs, you guys need to post it to YouTube. Yeah. I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to see if my YouTube person knows how to do that. They will know how to okay. do it. I was with a YouTube okay. guy now, yeah, this morning. Yep, they will know how to do it. We, okay. we, I have two job requirements, fetch it and make it go. <laughs> Very complicated. Fetch it means there's something I need. I have no idea, but you have to get it for me because I've, I've exhausted every resource right. and make it go. Make it go is anything technical where you have to make it go. Cause I, I, I read every article and I went down every rabbit hole and my mind is going to explode. So that's me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see what, I'll see what we can do with it. Okay. So, so you're going to hire your make it go person. Yeah. Okay. That's, oh, that's right. what I need. I need a make it go person. <laughs> I have a Everyone, person that does YouTube and a person that helps me with the social oh, media. That, but that's great. I don't thank have you. to make it happen. Person. Well, yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And don't forget to make sure to subscribe to Mary Jo's channel here. Subscribe to mine. Make sure that you follow us and follow me on YouTube and check out all of Mary Jo's um, consultation packages because it's one thing for us to try and answer questions here but we can really, really, really take care of you if you want to talk to us personally. So that's just a little, that's a little blurb for both of us. Yes. Okay? Thank you, Susan. All right, Mary Jo, we'll do this again, okay? Again, I promise. All right, my dear. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving Thank us your you. time on Sunday. Bye-bye.